Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am going to do some soft speaking, chewing gum, but this is story time. Yes, I am back with part seven. Yes, with episode three. Oh my goodness, you guys, are you ready? Are you ready? You ain't ready. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. Are you ready? Okay, let me get, let me chew this gum while you get ready. Get ready, okay? Where we left off at. If you haven't seen part one, I got sued twice. There's a part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You should stop seriously and go watch those and then come back. You know what I'm saying? So you can be in tune with the story. Or you can do like I do. When I read books, I start from the back to the front. But in, my, in part seven, oh yeah, episode two, we're going straight for the festival. I ain't explaining nothing, going back, giving y'all no rundown. No, 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 no. Because I had to get myself together for this episode. Because it's been a long time since I had to go back and think about all of the freaking drama that I went through. Now, I will start from here, though. I was dating a guy. His name was Antonio. And he was fine to me. I truly liked this guy. I thought that we were going to go somewhere in a relationship. Because this guy showed me nothing but compassion love, generosity. He was there at my back and call him. I said, jump. He said, ha ha. That's how much I thought that we was in a relationship. Okay. Now, this episode is called The Side Chick. Now, no female, no female wants to believe that they the side chick. I ain't gonna be nobody's side chick trying to hear that. And then when you find out that you might just be the side chick, it's some drama about to start. I mean, some real damn drama. Okay. So now, skip a whole of that. I'm at the door. In part two, I left you off at where I, this fool told me his mama had cancer. And thanks to my special spirit of life, they helped me remember. Y'all was right. It's, it's hospice or something like that. It's, it's, it's hospice. It's something. It's where basically it's your last days and they're helping you prepare to die. Okay? That's what he told me. Hope his mother was in the hospital. He was going to be gone for a while. During the time that I was really, really busy at work and I needed him, he worked for me. I see this is what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen any episodes from here, definitely go back if you're sitting through this. He told me the story about his mom and I believed him. But by me being a florist, 
I took it upon myself to make sure he get these flowers that was supposed to be delivered by him by Wayne but Wayne couldn't find the hospital so we went to four different hospitals couldn't find one so I decided that I would go by his house and that morning I had to make it quick because I had to be to work got to his house I rang the doorbell I heard people in the house in my mind thinking oh god I know I'm entering a sad situation probably interrupt him but I'm gonna drop the flowers off real quick just to let him know that I got his back I care about him I'm concerned about what he's going through at this moment a girl comes to the door she holding a baby Okay. When she comes to the door, I'm standing there with a big bouquet of flowers. I said, hello, um, I'm dropping these off for Antonio's mother. I'm so sorry about what you're going through. Oh, the baby. What do you mean? I said, um, Antonio, explain to me your mom's situation. My mom's situation? What situation? What are you talking about? I said, um, okay, I still got the flowers. Your mom not in the hospital? You must be that rich lady. She ain't talking about me because I know damn well I'm not rich. What's she talking about? Um, your mom's okay? Oh, you need to come inside. I'm looking back at the car. I'm thinking, should I go inside? So I said, well, let me take these flowers back to the car. I go back to the car. And I tell my daughter, I said, get out the car and come in here with me. The girl said, his mom is okay. So my daughter gets out the car. She comes in the house with me. And we stand in there. And the girl sits down. On his sofa now. It was a really, really small apartment, but it was a lot of people in there. But the people were in, in the often of get together. It was like family members, like on a Saturday morning, evening, watching cartoon, eating cereal, babies running around. And that nature. How she looked up at me from the couch and she was like, My mom is at work. Okay, I don't want to seem rude. I'm a little confused. Why would Antonio tell me his mom was dying? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm pissed off that he would even say something like that it's about my mama. And then she started talking really, really loud. It sounded like she was about to cry. Ever since he started working for you, he haven't been here for the family. He haven't brought no money home. He haven't helped us. We're behind in a rent. We're about to lose our apartment. And then he been riding around here in a brand new truck. Got a nice cell phone. Got new clothes on. And haven't helped us done nothing. And my mama done a lot for him. And I did go tell somebody that she dying. And she not but father. He wished that on our mother. 
<clears throat> she was like really, really mad. So I just let her talk. But in my mind, I was thinking to myself, okay, I don't want to assume nothing, but I'm starting to get mad. It went from me being a concerned type girlfriend. I need answers right now. I don't give a F what's going on. I don't care where you at. Call me right now. So I told her, I said, okay, call him. Call him right now. And she said, um, did you try to call him? I said, yeah. He haven't answered my calls. It's going on three days. I haven't heard nothing from him. He haven't texted me back. So at this point, I told her, call him, call him right now. Tell him that the woman he worked for is at his house. Tell him why you're on the phone. He don't bring me my truck, my cell phone. I'm calling the police. I ain't gonna do it when I get home. I'm gonna do it right now. So he better answer the phone. This time when you call, he better answer the phone. Yeah, I'ma call him. He never gives me no problem with answering the phone. He always answers the phone. And if he don't answer the phone, a retard answer the phone. I said, who is a retard? She said, Since he don't want to do right by our family, I'm about to tell you everything. So, my daughter's standing there. My daughter walking back and forth. And she looking around. And she upset. And I could tell she upset. She said, Abita is my best friend. So I'm looking at her. I'm like, your best friend. I said, mm hmm. Well, how old are you? She said, I'm going on 17. Now, Too much of it when she said our mother because I have a sister that's the same age as my youngest daughter. When I was 19, my mother had a daughter, which is my sister. Same time, I was basically about to have my daughter. So I said, okay, so I'm now kind of like tapping my feet and wiggling my fingers. I'm like, 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 I'm getting mad about a second. And she said, Antonio's stupid. He think he better than the whole family ever since he met you. He been acting different. He went to prison for messing with Arita. Her family pressed charges on him because I knew she was sneaking around seeing my brother and I told her to stop seeing him because he was a grown man. Now, from what she tell me, he went to prison for a few years. And he was basically in him running neck and neck and age. So now, my mind just like, oh, snap. No, man, what? And she said, yeah, he went to jail and everything. It got locked up over her. And he was supposed to never see her again. So she said, we thought he was doing good. Because he was talking about you, coming home bragging about you, always seemed to be happy about you every time he came over. Now, mind you, he didn't live with his mother. 
Hey, Liv. I'm not part of the hey she yet with a cousin. Okay, I'm not a guy cousin. And she told me that he was coming by a house and he would discuss me with his mother and tell his mother how he happy he met me. I'm a nice looking lady. I'm a smart woman. I got my own business, all stuff he was telling his mother. And his sister was like, then one day, his mother came to him and said, hey, I need help. I'm about to get put out of this place. I need you to help me catch up so we don't get put out. My sister said he had his mother thinking that he was going to help them out and everything. And then he came home one day and he was like, he'd be back and he didn't come back. So she said her best friend called her and said, hey, um, Antonio got us a place. Two things in that one sentence, Antonio got us a place. So I was like, so Antonio got her and him a place? And she said, well, at first, it was supposed to be for her and just the baby. What the fuck did you just say? Her and just the baby. I said, what? What baby? They just had the baby about four months ago. What the freak? That's how long we've been dating. About four months. yelling at the freaking lady's house and the girl was like it's okay it's okay calm down i know you're upset i know you're upset before i call him i need you to calm down because i'm i'm not gonna let him know that you were here and i was thinking like i didn't know what i was gonna do i didn't know what i was gonna do but i was freaking mad do you hear me one he's seeing some freaking girl in there either two he went to freaking prison. Wait a minute, did he go to freaking prison? Then, 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 for the girl, okay? The girl was a baby, okay? So that's freaking to get back now. I was like, what? And then, and then, and then, that bitch went and got on a plate. We ain't got a plate for him and the girl. What? The, what? And then, oh my God, a baby. I don't even know if I mentioned that. I mentioned that. Baby, no one freaking going crazy standing there watching her call him. I think we can in contact with him. I hear one time, so it was a you know, that lady that you dating is looking for you. He said, What? What? I said, Yeah, she brought some flowers to the house, said that it was for mommy. In the background, talking about something. Um, 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 what did, what did she say? Did she leave the flowers? She said, she right here. She gave me the phone. He was like, I can explain. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He yelling, he already crying, crying, okay? Antonio, I don't know what the F is going on. I want my freaking truck. I want my phone. And I want it right now. Bring me my shit. Bring me my shit right now. Where the fuck you at? Where you at? I'm going to come. But you're going to have to calm down. You're going to have to calm That's enough. No, no, no. You better come right now. Right now. Then all of a sudden, somebody coming through the door. So now I'm cursing his ass out. 
I'm mad. I'm so mad. You ever been so mad you can't even cry? You, you ain't got no tears. I had no freaking tears in my eyes. I was so freaking mad, okay? Mother come through the door and the girl running up to the mother telling the mother who I was. And the mother coming in. She grabbed my hand and told me to calm down. Calm down for a second. Just calm down. She grabbed the phone. She said, Antonio, I don't know what's your problem, but you better get over here. You better get over here right now, and you better fix this. This don't make no sense. I told you, boy, you was going to get yourself in more trouble, and you're going to end up back in prison. And he was like, get a phone back. Get a phone back to Spirit. She gives me the phone. So now, I got to come to stay calm. Because now I got to try to respect his mom. At the worst freaking time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What time? Mm -hmm. I. I. I see you tomorrow night. I. 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 Mm -hmm. Hang on. I'm so sorry that you had to go through this. She said, I don't know when Antonio gonna grow up. She said, I don't know why he's interested in that little girl. I was thinking to myself, I want to scratch his fucking eyes out. I was so freaking mad because I was saying to myself, okay, this girl's about 17 years old now, right? They went to jail for a few years. This damn man in his late thirties. What the freak is going on? What the freak? Then I was saying to myself, hey, all, all, all around me, everything, everything had to be a lie. He had to be pretending the whole freaking time. But now, I had to try to put the puzzles together. I had to, matter of fact, I ain't even gonna lie. I didn't even wanna put the pieces together. I was just so done with him. And then, on my way home, all I could think about, you know when you start dating a guy, they come by your house. Okay, I'm, I'm just in my experience, okay? You just come by my house at night. And, you know, you end up staying. So he would bring changing clothes. And he'd be like, I'll, I'll get that another day. So next thing you know, I know he got sneakers at my house. I got changing clothes at my house. He got important papers at my house. And I was like, I'm tell you what I did. In my closet, I made a little space for him for his little stuff. Because I was feeling all in love. And then all freaking <clears throat> thinking I'm in a relationship, okay? So I started fixing little stuff in the closet so he could hang his stuff and put his stuff and let him know that. Basically, you walk him at my house, and you know, I want him to be closer to me and everything. So, on the way home, all I could think about was his stuff. I lost it. I was so freaking mad. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. Okay. I was wrong. I'm admitting that I was wrong. I never apologized for it. I got all his stuff, everything, everything. And I took it to a construction site dumpster and dumped that shit. Dumped it. Right on the. That's it. And then I freaking left, okay? That's what I did. I didn't care about what was important and what wasn't important. I didn't care about what he liked and what he didn't like. I didn't care about how much he loved this shit. I was freaking mad, okay? Now, I know y'all thinking, Spirit, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't end the story right here. Please don't end the story. I ain't gonna end the story. I'm not gonna end the story, okay? Next day, I get off of work. And 
and I decide I'm gonna have the young man take me down there so I can get my freaking car. I left my daughter at home because I ain't went there with me because it was late. It was like nine o'clock at night. Me and Lamar gets down there, right? Now on the way down there, Lamar told my son, I knew he wasn't no good. I knew he wasn't no good. I said, Lamar, the bitch been in prison. And he didn't even tell me. You know what I'm saying? I probably, I probably wouldn't even, probably wouldn't have cared. It would have been the reason why he went to prison that probably would have kind of set me back and not want to have nothing to do with him. He didn't, he didn't tell me that he went to jail. No matter of fact, he made it look like he was a businessman and he was freaking, freaking clean, okay? Yeah, I kind of knew he went to prison. Told you I went to prison. I said, Yeah, so I knew him then. I, what the? He said, That's why we didn't really get along because when I picked him up, I was like, Hey man, what's up? He was like, Oh shoot, you work for you work for Spirit? He's like, Yeah, she's my best friend, she's like my sister. He said, Oh damn, man, I didn't tell her I went to prison. Don't, I'm gonna tell her on my own time, don't tell her. Um, I said he agreed to it because he, he went to prison and Antonio was, knew that he had got raped and that's the reason why he told me the truth about him being gay and that he got raped because he didn't want Antonio to come out and tell me the reason why he knew I was gay and that's why I told you first but I didn't tell you about Antonio because I, he told me that he was going to tell you. I ain't want no bad, no bad blood at the business. I was already feeling bad about the fact that he was spreading my business already. Okay, Lamar. We're supposed to be cool, like, regardless. We worked together for too many years and too long, like, for you to keep that big of a secret from me. Like, that's, that's messed up. You should have told me. Okay, because now I'm in a situation that I'm not understanding. And then I'm sitting up here. I got this man coming to my house, having dinner with me. And he's getting pedophile and I got a young daughter at home. Like, you should have told me. So I said, but you know what, no mom, I'm starting to feel like I can't freaking trust you. You, you trade on me for Wayne. Okay, behind my back, you talking about me to Wayne. And now you freaking knew. You freaking knew that I was in prison, you didn't tell me. And then he told me something, but I, I told Wayne. <laughs> what? You what? He said, yeah, I told Wayne. I said, what the freak? Why you tell Wayne? I had to let Wayne know that we need to watch out back because he wasn't no good. In my mind, I'm thinking, oh my God, everybody talking about me, everybody laughing behind my back. Oh my God. I said, Lamar, what way is that? I'm going to see how far. So, but you just going to let me hurt my feelings. Probably in front of people at work. It was like, no, no, I was going to tell you I was trying to work my way up to do it. Win, win, bitch, win. Okay. Oh, my God. So now me and Lamar arguing in the, in the car. We arguing all the way to Antonio's house, yelling and screaming. And he, told, he told me something. No, I got you back. I got you back. You know I care about you. You know, I just can't come out and tell you people business. But you can win. You can, you can tell win. What the freak? I told your house I had to pull myself together. I was upset. Now the tears started falling. I think I started crying mainly because Lamar just continued betraying me, you know, and I felt hurt because I was embarrassed. I'm already embarrassed. 
and Lamar knew something I didn't know. He didn't save me from humiliation. Like, he, he, you know, I was only dating this guy for a good three weeks before I let him come work for me. Lamar could have saved me a whole lot of heartache. Because I would have ended, ended it, okay? And I was just hurt. So I was just, he was like, I'm so sorry. Don't don't be crying. You don't need to be crying. You're almost at the house. We pulled up. And before we pulled up to the house, I told him, well, let's scope the house out first. For some reason, when I was younger, me and my friends, I had a bunch of friends when I was younger. And when we dealt with one of the boyfriends cheating, we always scoped out the house before we just pull up to it in case it's going to be some stuff. You know what I'm saying? I had got this feeling. And I was like, okay, well, okay, but what we scoping out? So I just want to see who's going to be coming in and out this house. We and Lamar stayed out there for like 30 minutes scoping it out. We didn't see nothing, right? In front of the door. And Lamar beats the horn. And Antonio comes downstairs, goes around to the window, and he looked down the window and he was like, What's up, Lamar? He said, like, Hey, what's up, man? He was like, I was like, Listen, I know I said that I will listen to what you guys said, but I'm, I'm really tired. I'm really upset. And I just want my truck and I want my phone. That's it. So he was like, um, well, can you get out the car for a minute? I just want to talk. Just like, no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. just give me my keys, give me my phone so I can go. That's it. And I kept on running his mouth, so I started yelling. Give me my freaking keys. Give me my phone. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I'm all like, look, calm down. At least get closure out of it. Get out the car and talk to her for at least a minute. So I get out the car and he hands me my keys. All gentle. And I put it in my hand. And he said, I'm so sorry that I hurt you. I swear on everything that I loved you. And I still love you. I'm still in love with you. I just want you to hear me out. I said, where's my phone? He said, I'm gonna have the phone. I don't have the phone. Something happened, I don't have the phone. Where is it? So now, I'm out there, I'm about to raise my voice. Then his cousin was out there. He was like, look, young man, Arita's on her way here. Man, she need to go, she need to go. So my cousin telling him that I need to go. Arita's on his way, on her way to the house. So I said, I'm not going nowhere until he give me my phone. I'm done with this. I'm, if I have to call the police, I'll call the freaking police. I want my phone right now. Oh, then he over there, he argued with his cousin. He was like, man, you could have pulled me to the side. You ain't had to come out here with all of that. You could have just pulled me to the side, man. Why you got to do that? Why you got to do that? So my heart, I believe the cousin had good intentions because he was letting me know some shit was about to go down, right? All of a sudden, Lamar was like, all right, Spear, let's go. Forget the phone. Let's go. Car pulls up. Three girls. A girl jump out. Spirit, you spirit. And then he jumping in front of her, right? And he's like, no, 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 no. And I was like, uh. She was like, I was like, you know what? Just give me my phone, Antonio. I'm done. And I, and she was like, I got some fucking words for you, spirit. But you ain't got nothing to say to me because I'm done with them. You can freaking have them. I don't want no freaking garbage. Why, bitch? You garbage. You garbage. I'm freaking mad no more because I'm freaking done. And she was like, you know what? 
be I'm about to F you up. They get out the car, right? And I'm thinking to myself, okay. Let me have some brains here. Let me try to remember that this girl is a kid. Well, not a kid, but you know, I'm in my freaking late 30s. She's like 17. I'm saying, you know what? I just want my phone and I'm done with both of y'all. I ain't got time for you, little girl. I ain't messing with you. You ain't nothing but a kid. You ain't nothing but a baby to me. I ain't got time for you. Man, I was, I was so mad. I was yelling and screaming right along with her. What? 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 Little girl, little girl. And she jumped around him. And another girl came from around him. And I felt my hair being pulled. And I tell you, back in the day, when Spirit wore the wigs, I sold them fucking down. Do you hear me? I sold my wigs down. Do you hear me? Let me tell you why. Because I was at work all day long and wigs move around. I ain't had time for that. So I would buy like nice wigs and I would have them sewn into my braids, okay? And let me tell you, I ain't never thought that would be a good idea to, to, until that day, okay? I hear went and, and pulled. I was like, but damn, I'm gonna tell you like this. If my hair was not sewn down, my wig would have been in her freaking hand, okay? And all I could freaking think about was how hard she pulled it. And I started thinking. And a flash went through my head that if my wig was not sewn down, I thought, oh, that's it. I'm about to whip her ass. And I was like, come on, that's it. You're about to freaking get your ass whipped because I'm sick. You pulled my thing in my So he jumps in front of her. Lamar jumps out the car. And he was like, y'all ain't gonna jump her. Y'all ain't gonna jump her. He said, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, if if y'all jump her, I'm jumping in it. So then here come Antonio. You ain't gonna put your hand on him. You ain't gonna put your hand. He's like, I'm telling you right now, man. I'm telling you, you better do something about this right now. I'm gonna call the freaking police and know what the freak is going on out here, man. I said, you know what? Call the police going on. Call the police right now because you know what? I want my phone. Phone that money right now. Okay, look, let's just calm down. I, I'm, I'm gonna get your phone. I promise. You know, it's too it's getting, it's getting too wild out here. The next thing you know, he got hit in the head like somebody punched him in the back of his head, and it was the girl. And he turned around and he was holding his head and he looked at his head. It's like, oh my god, did you just hit me with a bottle? And she was like, I hate you, mother ever. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. This is what she was saying to him, right? Oh, then he trying to grab her. And him and her, her friends, they all rolling on the ground because he's she fighting on him and he holding on to her. They jumping on him. So we left them. We, me and Lamar got in the car and left him on the ground being jumped by her and her damn friends. I know that was a lot. I told you, this story time right here was gonna be intense. Cause it was, it was freaking crazy. Now, the next day, I had to go to work. I couldn't let nothing stop what was going at the business cause I was still in the process of losing everything. And I was telling Joyce what happened. Lamar came there and he started telling Joyce what happened. And Joyce said, oh, that don't make no sense. Like, he seriously need his ass kicked. Like, seriously. I said, Joyce, I'm so embarrassed. I haven't had a fight, like a physical fight. I haven't had a fight of a girl since I was like 16 years old. You can see it. I'm going to scratch my mouth. 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 I'm going to
great power. And I didn't do that part of it. But page in um page in the page is beep 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 beep. Went to phone call, called them, and one of my cousins said, Oh, you need to get down here. Because your sister's out here getting jumped. And your mother is out here fighting too. Okay, I'm out there. About to fight this girl. I lost my mind when she pulled my hair. All my senses went out the window. I said with so much freaking drama, Joyce, it didn't make no sense. <laughs> Uh, Sam, Davida comes up to me, she said, Hey, Spirit, you busy right now? I said, uh, No, she said, but you got a phone call. Goes to answer the phone. The Spirit, I said, Yeah. Um, don't hang up. I really want to talk to you. This a visa. I got your phone. I'm calling you from it. I said, so the reason why you're calling me is because you're returning my phone. Well, I can't return your phone until you agree to talk to me. We need to have a meeting. <laughs> yeah, like, what? <laughs> Little girl, I'm not having a meeting with you. She said, no, I'm serious. I really, really need to talk to you because a lot is at stake. A lot is at stake. I said, at this point, me and Antonio is over, okay? There's nothing at stake. I'm done with him, and his bitch ass is fired. And she's like, well, that's what I need to talk to you about because he can't lose his job. Wait a minute. <laughs> what? What? You calling me? You don't try to jack my freaking wig off? I'm trying to save his job. I said, you know what? Return my phone. I'm all in Williamsburg. I know, far from where you at. I'm gonna give you two days. I'm gonna give you two days. Return my phone. And I hung up. I'm on there working. I'm rushing, running through the store. I got a phone call again. Joyce said, hey, there's an emergency phone call on the phone for you. I'm running, jump, jump, run, I didn't get the phone call. Don't hang up. I said, look, I'm seriously not playing with you. Don't call me no more. Don't call me no more. And then, next thing I know, Phone me. Joyce answered. Joyce comes, she said, Some girl on the phone said that um you was messing around with her baby's daddy and messed up their family. I goes to the phone. I said, hello. I said, first of all, I ain't know nothing about you. I never heard of you. Second of all, I didn't even know that he had a baby. And third of all, if I even knew that he was involved with somebody, I wouldn't have had two cents to do with him. Stop calling my freaking business. Stop contacting me. And return my phone. At this point, take my phone to the police station. Right now. So then, I contact Antonio's mother. I told her that the girl could call on my job, 
Now she's talking to different people on the job, telling them different stories. I said, I want my phone back. Now at this point, if I don't get my phone back, I'm gonna call the police. The mother said, you should. He's on probation, did you know that? He's what? He's on probation. She said, um, I ain't supposed to have nothing to do with that girl. At all. And he only been out of jail a year. She ain't supposed to have no baby by him. You don't get your phone back, and he don't fix this, then you should call the police. She said, that's what I'm gonna tell you what you need to do. To stop all this mess with this little girl, call the police. So, I got the phone with her. Later on, before the store closed, Antonio called me. And he said, listen, I'm coming back to work tomorrow morning. No, you ain't. You can't fire me just because you caught me I'm cheating. You can't fire me for that. So now, I went to go talk to Wayne. I told Wayne, I'm firing Antonio with all the bullshit that went down. I don't want him back at the store. I can't work with him. And Wayne was like, you ain't gotta explain that. The man took off all them days during the holiday and he lied. He said that his, his, his mother was dying. He's fired, period. That's it. It ain't got nothing to do with you and him. He, he made his bed on lying. I said, hmm. So, Antonio calls me back the next day. And he says, look, when I come to work, you ain't gonna give me no problems, right? I said, Antonio, let me tell you something. I just got to work. It's like 6.30 in the morning. You don't need to show up here. Because I didn't get my phone. And I'm telling you, I gave you long enough to get my phone back. The girl been calling me, harassing me. And so that's because she care about me. I don't give a freak what she care about. You better not show up to this job. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. If you don't want me to show up, then I need you to pay me what you pay me three times, and I'll leave you alone. Wait a minute, isn't that extortion? Or blackmail? I don't know what that was. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You want me to do what? Pay me three times. I'll be out your life, I'll leave you alone. I said, oh, okay. Okay. So, he said, let me know what you're gonna do. I said, yeah, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call you back tomorrow morning. All right afternoon, the girl called. So, I sat down in my chair. I had one little roll, of, little rolling chair with the, the two arm vests. I had my legs crossed, and I was just spinning around, spinning around, thinking. And when she called me, she was like, it's a victim. I said, oh yeah, don't hang up. She was like, you ready to talk? I said, yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening to whatever you got to say. She said, well, Antonio needs his job because he just got us a place to live and me and my baby don't have nowhere to go. I'm not welcome back at my home no more. I said, why are you not welcome back at your house? Because I wasn't supposed to have nothing to do with Antonio. My mom 
did it. And when she found out I got pregnant and it was with him, she kicked me out. And now I have nowhere to go. And that's why he got me a place. And she said, he had to get us an emergency place because when he started dating you, he was working at he was working at a fast food, just doing janitorial work, and it wasn't bringing enough money home. And Dad, he was going to go online, and he's going to find somebody that he can date so that he can get us out of this situation. So this whole time been a plot? I'm gonna leave it right here and I will tell you what happened after I found out that basically I was plotted on. In episode four. <laughs> Exciting, right? Yeah. No, I'm sorry I have to leave y'all like this, but no, for real, I gotta go. But I would definitely be back with episode four to end part. Seven, and then I'll be on to my way to part eight.